So we are going for our next session. Uh, I would like to uh, invite Mr. Jayesh Patil uh, from Indian Oil Adani Ventures to talk about asset integrity and management. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Jayesh Patil. I am Senior Manager, Assets and Operation of Indian Oil Adani Ventures Limited. On behalf of our CEO, Mr. Atul Kharate, I am presenting this asset integrity management to all of you. So, uh, particularly you all are aware about asset integrity and management. Everybody knows how it is uh, performing, what we are doing. Everybody is well aware. But uh, going into the topic, particularly we are addressing to the asset integrity management in terms of uh, the activities which we are performing on to the assets, road recruitments, static recruitments and how we are managing it. I will share some case studies of failure which we have observed in uh, our last practices of managing the facilities. So, first of all, I would like to address the asset performance management, what it is, basically what is the basic criteria for that. Everybody is well aware. So, uh, asset performance management is a utilized framework that enables you are administrator to make use of physical assets to realize business specific goals and you employ multiple asset performance management strategies to maximize profit and reduce business risks includes dk dk curve asset performance score service life risk rating criticality rating then conditioning rating these all are the kpis which we daily address and on management of all these KPIs, we address our asset reliability. And further for going forward to it, the intelligent non conformity tracking, for that we are utilizing the tools of asset integrity, those are like CMMS, then EAM, then IMS, and we are addressing through it. But what are the constraints? When we go into these uh, tools, the actual knowledge sharing to the downline is not happening. The top management level is well aware about all the facilities of these tools, but it is not been percolated to the downline of the uh, organization. So particularly though people, those who are working on to these tools are not giving a proper data, which is particularly addressing uh, to the failure of assets. So further going to it, I will show you the failure of assets, uh, the major two assets which we have uh, um, influenced in our uh, last working year. So first was of uh, failure of tank, that was uh, happened uh, six months ago and that was been taken care at our facility. So if you see particularly in this case, so there was a failure of tank that was because of the settlement of the tank and that happened uh, because the tank was very old that was 25 years old and the uh, care which we have to take was not addressed due to the lack of knowledge the people those who are operating the tank. So in this if you can see the scenario is being presented in front of you the tank was settled and the bottom platform of the tank was ruptured. So the pile cap, if you can see on the second uh, photo line, that was ruptured and which has uh, uh, led to the leak of the bottom plate. So that was taken care. The emergency was uh, taken care immediately. The tank was emptied out by loading vessel line. That was a non-classified product. If we, that would have been classified product, what would have been done? What scenario would have been that? That scenario would have been very catastrophic. So these kind of situations need to be taken care of. So what measures we can implement? It's all true that we are utilizing tools, softwares, everything. But the perception regarding this maintenance need to be in place. Mm -hmm. So while addressing such situations, what activities to be taken care of? what measures have to be considered, that all need to be uh, considered and all those measures have to be 
put it into the standard and that has to be rolled out through these uh, tools while doing the maintenance. So this was the rectification measure which was taken care by our uh, expert team and that has been uh, sorted out uh, very easily. Second case was a failure of pipeline. Uh, that pipeline was 14 kilometers long. So in this pipeline, the issue was reported by the people when they observed that leakage has been uh, percolated to their domestic water supply. And what scenario would have been that? If such kind of instance goes into the public, what catastrophic scenario it would be? The agitation will definitely impact to your organization. So in that scenario, what precautionary measures need to be put in? As we have seen, ONGC is having very long pipelines, subsea pipelines. Similar kind of this pipeline of 14 kilometers was there and the failure was observed through the people. And which was addressed to the local administrative bodies, the statutory uh, bodies immediately rushed to the organization and they have started sc uh, scolding to the organization of non conformities So in these scenarios, we are seeing that the proper management uh, lack of awareness, lack of management has been resulted in. So the tools which we are referring, those should be addressed in a such a manner that these kind of scenarios to be taken care of and to be addressed in a such a manner that the organization should not be influenced by any measures. So particularly there are two scenarios why we are referring to these tools. So one is probability of failure, second one is consequence of failure. These both the scenarios are the uh, are taken from the methodology of LOPA. LOPA is the basic uh, tool which is particularly referred in asset integrity management, which is addressing to your uh, criticality identification. So in criticality identification, we refer to the RBI and FMECA. So in both the scenarios, these two tools are basically referring the probability and the consequences. On, on this basis, we are referring particularly five sectors like people's, environment, cost, reliability and reputation. These five sectors are basically addressed in terms of minimum, uh, then medium, then uh, high and catastrophic. These criticality levels are being addressed in these five sectors. So whatever the impact is going to happen, that has been taken care into these tools. The CMMS tools, I have worked with a lot of CMMS tools like uh, Maximo, Infor, Ultima, then Oracle. And But all these uh, CMMS tools are particularly not been addressed in such a manner where these two major scenarios are being taken care. So particularly we will have to think in that prospect also. Further to that, uh, these two scenarios particularly when we are uh, addressing into the CMMS system or asset integrity management system uh, taken care of in such a manner that where we can manage our asset integrity portfolio to safe keep our organization in terms of cost, in terms of uh, reliability, in terms of people, in terms of environment, in terms of reputation. So in asset integrity management, particularly uh, the constraints which I am seeing are uh, basically the regulatory compliance. There is a lot of uh, misunderstanding into the regulatory compliance, uh, which standard we need to follow, which compliance we need to submit to the government, how we can address uh, all those compliances to the government. So I would like to request uh, all these uh, asset integrity uh, companies to get in line with statutory bodies and uh, put their views in front of them, why asset integrity tool need to be referred and how it can support organizations like oil and gas to comply with regulatory affairs. Then second is cultural resistance. Cultural resistance is the major criteria 
which is impacting to our organization. The people are not aware about what actually these kind of tools are taking care of. So particularly uh, awareness need to be spread into the peoples, the resistance is being uh, taken care of by imparting training to them, providing knowledge to them, enhancing their uh, mental abilities in favor of referring to the such kind of innovative tools. Then integration of legacy systems. We are facing a lot of issues into the integration of old systems with these kind of tools. Nowadays, the IoT platform has influenced a lot of new mechanism. As I have a past experience in uh, last uh, five years, I was in Europe and I have uh, constructed and commissioned one terminal over there. The existing facility was there. It was of NATO, which was constructed in 1950s during the World War II. And that was completely refurbished and uh, a new uh, a product storage facility, midstream facility was constructed and commissioned. So that facility was com uh, constructed in such a pa pattern where that facility was operated by just two peoples. Just two peoples were operating, right from connecting to the vessel, unloading product to the tanks, uh, then loading it into the trucks and delivering it to the customer. Only two peoples were managing. And that was in Europe. So the perception of the European peoples have went to that level that they have trained those two peoples in such a manner that they can take care of that whole facility by sitting into the control room. Even they were connecting that marine loading arm to the vessel by sitting into the control room. The jetty was five kilometers away. But the training part which was given to those two operators was flawless. Those people were understanding what kind of IoT mechanism has been putted over there, how the automation system functions, how the equipment to be operated, how uh, product need to be handled. Everything was flawless. That was witnessed by us. So that kind of uh, legacy, we will have to bring it into our organization. We need to percolate that kind of knowledge to our peoples. And the asset integrity management has to be followed in that portfolio. Then training and skill development, that is what I was addressing. Then data analysis and interpretation. Particularly, we are lagging into this area. If we can see in all our industry, data analysis and uh, interpretation is not happening properly. So that is why we are leading to the failure of the assets, which is in increasing our MTT, uh, MTTF, MTTR, then MTBF, and that need to be taken care of by uh, doing analysis. Then resource allocation. This is the main constraint which we are facing now. Because of uh, cost optimization, a lot of companies have uh, increased load onto the manpower and reduced the manpower. That is that area we need to take care of and particularly address by uh, taking the understanding and managing management level of the employee who is executing the job. Then stakeholder engagement. Stakeholder engagement is the key area as stakeholders are always looking after the cost optimization and cost reliability. So this asset integrity management platform need to be derived in such a manner that where we have to convince our stakeholders that putting up some amount of money, we can save ample amount of money. Then performance metrics, as our expertise have uh, derived, the KPIs need to be uh, derived in such a manner where uh, hard KPIs need to be followed and uh, a proper data analysis need to be reviewed. Then the major constraint in uh, using this tool is the cybersecurity constraint, as our industry is completely uh, well aware about the cybersecurity. So this also need to be addressed to these companies which uh, tools we are using. So uh, whenever we are going into such tools, this constraint need to be taken care of. Then life cycle management. By going with these tools, we can easily derive the life cycle management of our uh, equipments and that has to be put onto the papers and that has to be derived in such a manner 
that where we can uh, easily manage the asset reliability. So these were all the constraints which was uh, uh, envisaged by our company and us, by us, and that was I was presenting in front of you. If anybody is having any questions, you are open to ask. My name is T. Hachra, and I am from LNT's Asset Management Business Unit. It is the question is partially from that earlier panel discussion and from your slide also you have mentioned that cultural resistance yes and in that earlier panel member also uh, said that there is a there are two issues are there one is that competency and second is that partial implementation yes sir you so my question is that as a owner user Let's say the strategy is already set. Now, how far down the line the education or rather people needs to be educated so that that partial implementation, what exactly that uh, panel member was, that it can give the fruitful result or benefit as a overall, uh, means what is your take on it? You are addressing very nice uh, point, sir. Basically, uh, the partial implementation. I'm giving you a very small example. As we are uh, the customer of Hexagon, and we have uh, implemented EM from them in four, and we are using it in our organization. So particularly when we were into this asset maintenance portfolio, and that time we were Indian Oil Tanking Limited, and we were rolling out this all AMP project all over the world globally and the Infor was our partner. So in this particularly uh, peoples were addressed about only asset integrity and management but nobody envisaged how to integrate the cost. So when we are addressing asset integrity management all the uh, engaged peoples need to be taken care in line how we are going to arrange a cost implementation onto the asset and how it will be addressed into our finance systems. So partial implementation is particularly addressing to the asset integrity management, but not to the cost management. So that is where the uh, particularly understanding about the asset integrity management is not been percolated. So whenever this kind of uh, portfolio has to be rolled out, no, that has to be rolled out to the execution peoples along with that the management people. So RACI matrix has to be followed out. So responsibility, accountability, information and consultation need to be taken care of. So that is what is required. Thank you. Anybody else? I think that that uh, sums up the uh, purpose of uh, implementation uh, which was discussed. Uh, because if, if the purpose would have been uh, clearly stated or documented. Correct. That miss uh, might not have happened. No, no, it was taken care of into the documents, but was not percolated to the proper management. Means RACI was not followed. Okay. So that was the impact. So partial implementation is always give you in that portfolio the impact. So this need to be percolated properly through all the stakeholders. Thank you.